Well, how many of you guys love a good campfire? Okay, I heard a few yeses over here. I love campfires, okay? Growing up with my family, we were always the ones that went on road trips, so we went camping a lot. There were six of us, so a hotel was kind of expensive. Camping was a lot easier, way more fun. I love being around the campfire. I love the smell of it. You get to roast some hot dogs. I was never a s'mores person, though. My favorite was breakfast in the morning. It's over a fire is just better. I love being around the warmth. I'm a native Tucsonian. I am so cold all the time. So I love that fire. But yet inside of me, there's this fear, this fear of fire. It's so counterintuitive. I love campfires and I love having fun with my family and I, I love the warmth. I am so afraid of fire. And maybe you guys don't like campfires. Maybe it's more of a fireplace, okay? That's, that's awesome, it's the same thing. But in me, there's this fear of fire and we all deal with different fears, different challenges in our lives. So for me in my house, I have to make sure that I have a fire extinguisher so that I'm prepared because I've got this real fear of fire. It lives in me, it, it eats me up inside sometimes. I'm double prepared for my fire in my house because I've got a sprinkler system too in my apartment. So I've got a sprinkler system and I know right where this is so I can pick it up so I can make sure that I'm ready, so I can make sure I'm prepared. Let me tell you why I'm so afraid of fire. December 2018, I was living at home with my parents still and we were all winding down for the night. We're getting ready for bed. It's quiet. When all of a sudden we hear this explosion. We're like, what was that? Well, it wasn't in our house. So we go out front and we, we see our neighbors starting to gather. And like, what is going on? And we realize one of the houses in our neighborhood was on fire. The lady, she's outside, she's screaming, she's yelling, and we're trying to help calm her down. We're, we're holding her dog for her. We're like, what can we do to help? And we're like, well, she's outside of the fire. Why is she still screaming? What is going on? Well, her dad was still in that house. Unfortunately, he didn't make it out. Oh, that changed me. That instilled this fear of fire in me. And to this day, I'm still just like, oh, please don't let that happen to me. Here's what the house looked like the next day from the news article from the outside. It doesn't look that bad. You're like, okay, there's a little fire. I see some smoke residue, it's bricks. But inside, it was just complete devastation. It was heartbreaking. And in our lives, sometimes we feel like this. Sometimes we feel like we're just being consumed by what's going on in our lives. We feel like we're going through a fire with our finances, with our crumbling relationships, with our anger, our fear or our worry, our anxiety, depression, our health. Those things can feel like fires in our lives. They can feel like they're just consuming us. And so often we feel like this picture because we're not prepared. We're not prepared in our lives for those fires. So how do we get prepared? How do we have this for our lives? Because let me tell you, even as followers of Jesus, we're gonna go through fires. Life isn't easy. And Jesus tells us we're still gonna have troubles in this world, but we gotta have something like this in our lives. We gotta be ready for that fire so that we don't let it consume us completely. We've gotta be able to say, I've got God on my side. I'm not worried about this fire, I'm okay, I'll be okay. But we have to get to that point, we have to get prepared. I'm gonna introduce you to three guys. From the Old Testament, their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and we find their story in Daniel chapter three. Now their names are a little funny, and some of you guys may already know their story, but I love how 
our kids on the other side of the building think their names are quite hilarious. And even the king's name, his name is Nebuchadnezzar. It's, it's a fun one to, to say. It's, it's just kind of silly sounding. Here at Alive Church, we do one voice. So our kids, our youth, and our adults, we're all learning the same thing today. We're learning about fires in our lives, and we're learning how we prepare for them. And we're going to learn from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So let's talk about their story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are officials of King Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar has this characteristic about himself that I definitely do not have. I would say he's probably pretty narcissistic. He has built this 90-foot statue made of gold of himself. I mean, 90 feet, right? That's huge. I had to look it up. It's about the the height of a nine-story building of himself. He's brought all of his officials from across the province, and he said, okay, when you hear the musical instruments go off, you are going to bow down to my statue. You're going to worship me. So they come, and there's all these officials. The instruments go off, and they're bowing down, except three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They are the Jewish officials in the providence, and they know that their God is the only God that they will worship. God. They're not going to bow down to this 90-foot gold statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. They're only going to worship God. In our lives, we have these things that are telling us we need to bow down to them, not God. We have to learn to resist those temptations and those pressures. When we look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's story, the consequence of not bowing down was being thrown in a fiery furnace. Now, this furnace would have been big enough and hot enough that they could stand in it and that it would melt down all the gold for that statue. It would have been a hot fire. They knew the consequence, and yet they stood there and they said, I'm not going to bow down. They stood there and they said, we'll face the fiery furnace. For me, in my life, sometimes when it comes to those fires that I'm going to face, I just want to go, God, can't I just bow down and then ask for forgiveness later? Like, I don't really want to be different. I don't want to stand out. I just, I want to blend in. Can you forgive me for that instead? But what God wants us to do is, he doesn't want us to do that because what's happening is we're not trusting him through that fire if we do that. God wants us to look at him and say, we trust you completely. We trust that you'll help us through this fiery furnace. We trust that you'll help guide us so that we don't bow down to the statues. We trust that you will be with us. We, we can't just ask for forgiveness for doing the wrong thing. We've got to obey God. We've got to fully trust in him. Daniel 3.16 says this, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. They're standing firm. They're looking at the king and they say, we are not going to bow down because we don't need to defend ourselves before you. There's somebody else defending them. Who? Oh, that was a weak answer. (laughs) I think everybody should know, right? Who's defending them in this? God. They know, they, they're looking at this fire that they're facing and they're saying, my God is bigger than King Nebuchadnezzar. My God is bigger than that furnace. We don't need to bow down. We don't need to defend ourselves before you. And that's where we find our characteristic of God. See, in this series, God 316, we've been looking at different 316 verses and we're seeing the characteristics of who God is. And today, We're learning that God is all powerful. I want you to say that with me. God is all powerful. I love this word all powerful because it's the word omnipotent. And when you break that word down, it's omni, all, potent, powerful. He is all powerful. He's the creator of the universe. Wouldn't you expect that he is all powerful? He created all of us in this room. He created everything. Everything is his. He's all powerful. And that fire you're going through, he's more powerful than that. It doesn't matter what financial problems you're having, 
what relationships that you're dealing with that are crumbling, anxiety or fear. He's bigger than that. He's more powerful than that. He can rescue us from that. That's what I love about God. My God is bigger than my problems. My God is bigger than my fires. My God is all powerful. So from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we can learn three things to deal with fires in our lives. We have to be cultivating unwavering faith. That's our first point. And I love that word unwavering because it reminds me of like, just like planting your feet and being like, you can't push me over. You're just really strong in it. I think a lot of times in, in our faith, we, we kind of like have a, like a one foot stance and the other one's like tippy toed. And we're like, yeah, you can kind of push me and we'll tip over sometimes. We're looking at the temptations and the statues and we're saying, okay, maybe we'll bow down this once and, and then God, please just forgive me. I, I just don't want to stand out. And we cave into the pressures. But what God is asking us to do is to stand firm, to cultivate unwavering faith and say, my God's bigger. My God's more powerful. I don't need to cave in because I know he can take care of me. I know that he's stronger than anything I'm going through. In Daniel 3, 17 through 18, it says this. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. Unwavering faith. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are looking the king in the face at this point. The king has brought them to him and he says, I'll give you one more chance. Bow down or you'll be thrown into the fire. And they say, the God whom we serve, he's able to save us. They have so much faith and so much trust in God in this moment. They're our example of unwavering faith. They trust in his power. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. They understand. They have to have unwavering faith. Here's the amazing part, though. They recognize that God can save them from the fire. But then they say this. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to your majesty that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. But even if he doesn't, even if we fall into the furnace and we burn up, we will never serve your gods. We will never bow down to your statue. We will never walk away from our faith because our God is bigger. Our God is stronger. They look the king in the face and they say, no. No, I'm not going to bow down. No, I am never going to serve your God. When it comes to the fires in our life, we have to be willing to look it in the face. We have to look Satan in the face and we have to say no. And we have to do this again and again and again because Satan knows how to use those temptations and those fires against us. He is conniving. He's clever and he knows how to just get into your mind and say, don't you just want to bow down this once? Don't you think God will forgive you? And we have to say, no, we have to say, our God is bigger than you, Satan. Our God is more powerful than any fire that you can put me through. We have to look at Satan and say, we'll never serve you. We'll never serve anything that you put in front of us. God is there with us through the fires. And we have to cultivate that unwavering faith to get to this point. That means that when we're going through fires, when we're dealing with those relationship problems, with our, our financial problems, with our worry, our anxiety, that we have to be able to say, I'm okay. I've got God. And then we have to recognize that God can give us joy and peace through fires. Oh, that doesn't make sense. When I think back to, to that lady in my neighborhood, her house is burned down. She's lost her father. You're telling me that through that, I could have joy still? I could have peace still? Yeah. That's the amazing thing about our God. He is bigger and more powerful. And he can give us those, even through the toughest fires that we're facing. You may be saying, Christy, you don't know what I'm going through. I don't. 
I don't know what you're going through personally, but I do know that we all are gonna go through fires at different times in our life. They're all hard in their own ways. And I do know that God's power is bigger. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. We have to trust him through our fires. Second Timothy 1 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. That self-discipline part really gets to me. That means I have to obey. I don't know about you, but obeying is not in my nature necessarily. I, I want to just do what I want to do. But when we obey God, he gives us power and love self-discipline. He does not instill in us the spirit of fear and timidity. It's like we're picking this up and he's going, I got you. You don't need to be afraid. No fire is going to harm you enough that you have to be worried about it. And yet I set this down and I, I fear and I worry, but I've got to be able to trust God. I've got to be able to say, God, I know you've got me. I don't need to fear. I've got your power living in me. God is all powerful. Say that with me. God is all powerful. So cultivate unwavering faith. Stand firm in who God is. And number two, we have to resist societal pressure. I want to take you back to high school, Christy. I, I had some really, really awesome friends who were fun to hang out with. And, you know, we had fun at school. But outside of school, my friends did not have good habits. And so as a freshman, I had to tell my friends from the very beginning of our friendship, listen guys, I love you. But when it comes to hanging out with you outside of school, I'm never gonna hang out with you that way. I'm never going to hang out with you when we're not in school. And I stuck true to my word, I really did. I never hung out with them outside of school. And my friends respected that. They never pressured me into anything and they always understood who I was, that I was not going to do that. They knew about my faith. I had to resist the pressures. But because of that too, I also had to deal with loneliness. I became an outcast a little bit in my friend group. They respected me in my decision, but I had to go through that fire of, of feeling lonely. Sometimes when it comes in our lives, when we resist that societal pressure, we're gonna go through different fires. We're gonna look different to the world, which means we might deal with other fires in our lives like loneliness, being an outcast, being an outsider. We have to be not of this world and Jesus says that. He says, don't be of this world. He wants us to be different. He wants us to stand out. We have to go back to that unwavering faith. We have to be different. Can't cave in. So we have to resist societal pressure. Here's how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. They resisted. They didn't bow down to that 90 foot gold statue staring them in the face. They stood out. They didn't cave in. They stood there and looked Nebuchadnezzar in the face and they said, I will never bow down to your God. I will never bow down to any statue you put in front of me. I know who I am in God. And they knew the consequence. The consequence for them was they fell into the roaring flames. There's this question that King Nebuchadnezzar asks them before they get to this point. He looks at them and he says, what God will rescue you from my power? Whoa. That would make me be like, okay, I'll just bow down. It's fine. I'll just ask God for forgiveness later. Whew. What God will rescue you from my power? That's what Satan is saying to us all the time. Those fires in our lives, they're saying that to us. What God is going to rescue you from my power? What God is going to help you through this relationship? What God is going to help you through this anxiety? That's hard. When we come up against that, man, that makes me feel really weak and small. But then we have to come back and we have to say, no, 
unprepared. My God is more powerful than this. What God will rescue you? My God. My God will rescue you. He has prepared me for this fire. He's gotten me ready. Are we going to cave in or are we going to stand out? Are we going to stand in his power? Isaiah 41.10. Don't be afraid for I'm with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. When it comes to those fires in our lives, what would happen if we just trusted him with it? What would happen if we just said, okay, God, I give you this fire. I trust that you'll help me. I, I can't do it on my own. Well, we see what would happen. He will strengthen us. He will help us. He'll hold us up with his victorious right hand. I want that for my life, don't you? I think I'm speaking to the wrong crowd. I hope you want this for your life. Do you want that? Yes. We're all going to go through fires and challenges. Some of you guys are going through them right now. Are you doing it with your power or God's? Because if you do it with God's power, if you go through these fires with God's power, he's going to strengthen you. He's going to help you. He's going to hold you up with his victorious right hand. You'll experience joy and peace through those fires. And it's really hard to believe that, but it's true. He puts the fruit of the spirit in us and we can experience those as we go through these fires. Think about your, your fire right now. Maybe you're really struggling. Maybe you feel like it's just consuming you. What if you just trusted him? Just this once, just trust him once. What harm would it do? Maybe you'll experience his strength and his help. Maybe you'll experience his victorious right hand for once. Because God is more powerful than any problem we're going through. And we know that because God is all powerful. Say that with me. God is all powerful. The third thing we can learn from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is to look for God's deliverance. Okay, we're going to go right back to their story. They are in the fire. They are being burned up. But that's not true. God does something miraculous in them. God uses their story in a miraculous way. Daniel 3, 24 through 26. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men, unbound, walking around in the fire, unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. Four men walking around, unbound. They fell into the fire, bound up. They were tied. I want to tell you more about this furnace now. The furnace, we already know, it's so hot it can melt gold for the statue. It's big enough that they can stand in it. But before they're thrown in, King Nebuchadnezzar is so mad at these three that he orders the furnace to be heated up seven times hotter than normal. I can't do the math on that, but that's hot. That's way hotter than my campfire that I like to get toasty around. This is hot. It's so hot that when the guards throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire, the guards die from the heat. It's hot. And yet they see four men unbound walking around in the fire. What God is able to rescue you from my power? The king asks them that. And we see what God, four men unbound. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the most high God, come out. That's quite a change of heart, isn't it? He goes, can't rescue from my power to servants of the most high God. They come out. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego 
step out of the fire. When we see this story, we see that it's the angel of the Lord with the men in the fire. And some theologians say that that's Jesus literally standing with them in the fire. And they step out of the fire. This isn't metaphorical. It's not like they burned up and then, you know, they, they were okay later. They were in the fire. They walked out of the fire. And even more than that, their clothes were not burned. They didn't smell like smoke. And not a single hair on their head was singed. That's a picture of eternity for us. We're going to go through fires in this world. We're going to deal with challenges and trials. It's just a part of being a part of the sinful earth. But eternity is perfect. Eternity is when we step out of the fires of this world and we get to be in perfection with Jesus. But the other thing that's true from this story is that whatever fire we're going through here on earth, Jesus is standing right there with us. He is standing, walking with us in the fire, unbound and unharmed. We go through fires. We deal with those broken relationships, with those finances and doubts and fears and anxiety. I deal with fear and yet I have to go, I'm prepared. I'm prepared for that fire. I've got God on my side. He's standing with me. He can put out the fire if he wants to. But even if he doesn't put out the fire that I'm dealing with, he'll take care of me. One way or the other, he'll take care of me. And I will never serve another God. I won't bow down to that statue and then ask for forgiveness. I'm going to trust God through the whole thing. Doesn't matter the fire. He's more powerful than any fire I can go through. Isaiah 43, 2. I want you to read this with me. If you go through deep waters. No? When? Oh, sorry. Let's try again. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. This verse doesn't say if. It doesn't say if you go through deep waters, if you go through rivers of difficulty, if you walk through the fire. It says when. When you go through things. Because Jesus tells us we're going to go through trials. We're going to go through troubles. When those come your way, know that I'm with you. I will be with you. I will be with you. You will not drown. You will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. God is more powerful than that fiery furnace. And he's with you. And this picture to me is so amazing that I have to remember, it doesn't matter the fire I'm going through. Right now, later in life, it doesn't matter what fire I went through in the past. He was right there with me. He's with me now. And he'll be with me in the future. He's more powerful than any fire that I'm going through. He's more powerful than any fire you're going through. He's with you. He protects you. He defends you because God is all powerful. There's a song by Hillsong. It's literally called Another in the Fire. It's like the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the words in that song I had never noticed before how they change. The first verse, there was another in the fire. It's that realization of, okay, God was with me through that fire. The second verse, God is another and is in the fire. The third verse, there will be another in the fire. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the fire rivers holding back the seas and should I ever need reminding what power has set me free there is a grave that holds no body now that power lives in me there's another in your fire you're not going through this alone God's with you and that song 
It's such a good reminder. He was with us. He is with us. He will be with us again. And the power that sets us free from those fires, that's God's power living in us and through us because God is all powerful. He's omnipotent. He's our defender. He's our shepherd. I saw a man consumed by fire, literally. And I don't want this for my life. I don't want this for your lives. But God can save. God can stand with us and he will stand with us through any fire that we're facing. That question that the king asks Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what God will rescue you from my power? He has a change of heart. And I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but when Satan is asking you that, what power will rescue you from my power? You gotta remember, God can rescue you. He's more powerful. He's omnipotent. But yet we set down the fire extinguisher and we say, okay, I'm gonna go through this fire by myself and it's gonna, it's gonna be really awful. But if we just went back to God and say, I'm prepared, I've got God, I don't need to fear, I don't need to worry, I'm prepared. Then when that question is asked, what God will rescue you? My God, my God will rescue me. He can rescue me. And ultimately, whatever fires I do go through, when it comes to eternity, I'm rescued. I'll live in perfection. Don't let Satan's question get you down. He's going to ask you it again, again, and again, and again. Don't let it get in your head. Remember, God is all powerful. Here's the change of heart that we see in the king. There is no other God who can rescue like this. This is what we need in our lives every day. There is no other God who can rescue like this. We see the name of God, Jehovah Rohi, which means God is my shepherd. This picture of the shepherd, he's got his staff, and it doesn't matter if a bear or a lion is coming, he's going to defend those sheep. It doesn't matter if there's no water or food, he's going to lead us to water and food. He cares for our wounds, he tends to us. God is my shepherd. Jehovah Rohi. And when we remember this, we remember to live in his power because his power lives in us and he is all powerful. He's more powerful than any problem we're going through, any fire that we're facing. He's our shepherd. I've got this sticker for you that you should have gotten when you came in. And if you didn't get it, there should be extras at the Welcome Center. Throughout this week, I want you to remember this sticker. Take it home, put it on your mirror, Put it in your car. Put, I'm going to put mine on the back of my phone. I'm on my phone a lot. Put it in your pocket. Throughout the day, just remember that God is my shepherd. He's your shepherd. Whatever fire you're dealing with, he's with you. And he'll guide you through it. He'll defend you. This is part of your next step. I will remember that God is with me and more powerful than my fire by praying Jehovah Rohi every morning. Guys, this is a simple next step. Pray his name. Pray his name over your problems. Pray his name every morning. And just remember that he's defending you. He's with you. Whatever financial problems, whatever relationship problems, anxiety, depression, your health problems, Whatever you're dealing with, whatever fire you're going through, God's with you. He's standing right next to you, unbound, walking around in the fire. He's more powerful. He can deliver you from the fire. But even if he doesn't, don't bow down. Don't bow down. Trust God through it all. Pray his name. And we see how much God loves us from our memory verse. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, 
but have eternal life. Remember that picture, stepping out of the fire unharmed. That's eternal life. And he promises that to us. Trust him through the fires of this world. You're going to go through them. We're going to go through trials. We're going to go through challenges. Trust God in it. He'll deliver you. Trust God in it. He'll strengthen you. Trust God in it, and he will give you joy and peace. God is all-powerful. I want you to say this with me one more time. God is all-powerful. Don't set down your fire extinguisher. Don't set God off to the side and say, I'll deal with the fire myself. This fire extinguisher is not going to put a house fire out. I know that. But it'll give me enough time to get out. But God can save us from the fire. God can deliver us. Don't set him down. Trust him through the whole process. Trust him because he is all powerful. I really want you to take this next step. Check it off on your your paper connection card. Or if you're doing it digitally, do it on your digital connection card. Because I want you to know you're not going through this fire alone. We as a community, we're here to support and love each other. When you check off this connection card today that you're taking the next step, I'm going to pray over you this week. I don't know what fire you're going through. I don't know what problems you're dealing with. But I know that I can love and support you. I know that God is with you. That he's standing with you. So let me pray over you. Check it off and and tell me that you're taking this next step. Pray his name. See how it will change you this week. See how you will lean into who God is and how you will trust him. I want to pray for you right now. Dear God, we thank you so much that you are our defender. We thank you that you are more powerful than any problem we're going to face in our lives. God, I pray for everybody in this room that whatever we're going through, you would just remind us to lean on you. You would remind us to trust you through it all. You're in the fire with us. There is another in the fire. God, I just pray that you give us your joy and your peace through this fire, whatever fires we're facing. I pray your joy and comfort and peace on everybody. And if you haven't made Jesus the leader of your life and you're you're ready to take that next step right now, you're ready to experience his power in your life, you can pray with me. Just repeat these words. God, I recognize that I've sinned and I've done wrong. I don't wanna do that anymore. I wanna experience your power in my life. I don't wanna go through the fires on my own. I wanna know that you are with me. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Transform me to be more like you. Stand with me through the fires of life. In your name we pray. Amen.